Greetings and welcome to this course in Water and Physiology and to this lesson where I'm going to examine the connection between sleep problems like insomnia and dehydration. Um, essentially our body is mainly water and it's upholding a carbon-based frame and within it there's all kinds of different substances that uh, affect the alkaline and acid balance of this water environment. Now as many of us know there is this amino acid called tryptophan that builds up serotonin and melatonin, two neurotransmitters involved in the wake-sleep cycle. So when you're awake, the body produces serotonin uh, using this amino acid tryptophan. And when we go to sleep, there's, a, there's this ability of the brain to detect the decrease of light or the absence of light and pretty much degrade the serotonin and transform that serotonin into a melatonin using that tryptophan base. So what we see is that a lot of people who are experiencing dehydration, their body literally has to compensate on this deprived state. So many people who do experience dehydration start losing body weight. The, the body itself starts sacrificing amino acids for the survival needs of the body. So one of the things that the body does is that it downsizes the amino acid pool within the body, within cells, within uh, any types of systems because of the water volume that is decreasing. There is no need to keep that amount of amino acids around. Uh, all of them require water in order to have the required space to exist within this aqueous uh, physiology of cells or our body. Therefore, when the volume goes down, the, a lot of other things have to be cut down too. And one of the things is the amino acid pool. The, the pool of amino acids that are kept for continuous uh, creation of enzymes and different proteins for whatever process is necessary whether the organism is in a growth mode where it produces a lot of growth factors, uh, proteins that are involved in growth, or when it's in an inflammatory protection mode where the body requires the usage or the, the, it needs the amino acids to create those enzymes or antioxidants or different machines that are built on amino acids for that function, for that protection during the inflammatory process. So the body itself starts downsizing the amino acid pool and with it, it sacrifices tryptophan. And so the, the body itself doesn't have as much tryptophan to create the necessary amount of serotonin or melatonin when the body needs it during its cycles. Now that is a very scientific perspective. What is more significant is that the whole common sense argument that when you become dehydrated the organism is in a survival mode. It's saying, wow, there's not enough water, we have to activate all these different mechanisms to protect ourselves from further loss of water. And the organism is going to start those mechanisms up to ensure that the body does not lose additional water, but it's going to also uh, drive or keep the organism in the state of survival where the nervous system is jacked up. It really wants to uh, kind of cool down from this heated up experience that it's having because of the dehydration episode it's going through. So literally the organism is more concerned with getting water. So it's going to keep the processes awake, uh, your conscious mind involved in obtaining that relief. That is one aspect that is very much common sense based, that you are kept awake during the night hours, uh, not allowed to fall asleep because there's this basic element that you must provide the body with in order to uh, release, uh, relax, uh, calm it down. Now when we're taking a look at nerve cells, and we, we understand the whole aspect of, a, of pH balance within the body, within fluids. Uh, when there's an accumulation of acids, essentially an acid can start irritating cell components and uh, trigger the inflammatory process in them. 
So when we become uh, accumulated with acids in specific areas, the nerves, they can detect that. And let's say if our body is dehydrated to a point where it is not sufficient water to start washing away those acids and balancing out the fluid uh, pH within that area, essentially the acid accumulation it starts irritating the nerves and keeps them firing, keeps them preoccupied, keeps them restless. And what happens when you have a restless body? You have a restless mind. And in order to reduce that restness, restlessness, bring the body back down to, uh, or bring it up either way, to a calm state of being, it has to have one basic element satisfied. And that is water, this, this idea of hydration. So all those three different arguments, uh, scientific, common sense, and also this whole idea of the pH, they make a case, they prove a point, and hopefully you got it. And this is what I wanted to give you guys. You guys have a lovely day wherever you are. Blessings.